Welcome to the Norman Nick Show. I am Norman. Now in today's video, we're gonna break down the crimes that happened in Reno, Nevada with Daryl Brooks Jr., his baby mama, and the Nugget Hotel and all the receipts that come with it as far as the court paperwork and news articles and everything else. So strap on, get your copy. Well, I didn't mean strap on. Strap in, get your coffee. Let's get into this. Three, I believe that these photographs are designed to make a suggestion to the jury that Erica Patterson is a bad mom. I think that that's what the defendant is trying to do. And if we're gonna go down that road, then we would be forced to counter that claim. First of all, it doesn't make her an incredible witness, if it's even true. And second of all, if we go down that road, we would be forced to counter that claim by pointing out that not only does the defendant not live with the child in question, he doesn't live with any of the other children that he has, he impregnated Erica Patterson when she was a minor in Nevada, and for doing so, he was convicted of statutory sexual seduction, pled guilty in March of 2007 to that felony offense, and is a sex offender on the registry as a result. So if there's any causation that would lead to Erica Patterson being a bad mom, Mr. Brooks has a direct role in that causation. And that's furthermore, not to that, I'm not because sure. that's a lie. Let him finish. At the end of the day, Let him we, finish. We're gonna open the Mr. door on that. No, since he want to make a record and not be accurate, so let's be accurate all on the record. Since you think you know so much, once so again, we can Mr. open Brooks the door on. We can open the door on how old she told me she was. Interrupting. When we, met. we can ask He's, that question he is too. Then over the top animated right now. Do you know that? that? Mr. Brooks, I'm ordering you to sit down and to let this no, man finish. No, no, I'm not going to sit here and let somebody be inaccurate on the record and lie on the record. Right. Under Illinois versus Allen, I've warned him repeatedly. He's being removed from the courtroom. Um, and you know what? Let me dial that back. We're just going to take an early lunch. One hour. We'll be back. And uh, unless he brings that letter Dog and he can show it is inadmissible, you know she will on. not be questioned. <laughs> And under 9611, I will yeah, declare the cross examination closed. Thank you. We're in recess. One hour. Happened, bro. Get your facts straight. So let's let's open the door on all of it, then, so we can get all of it on the record. Since you think you know so much. So, dealing with the court case in Nevada, basically the DA and Brooks's attorney were in this whole political back and forth about uh, trying to be reelected or elected into a political field. Brooks' attorney versus the DA who was also trying to get reelected and some of the grammar that was used prior to this low end key reported case. Now, apparently Brooks' attorney had used the term of uh, being a slut. Um, he did try to apologize as you'll see here in the article, but when the push came to shove, there was actually a threesome that was involved and a MySpace page where the alleged victim and her girlfriend made a online profile stating they were over 18 and they were soliciting themselves online. Here's the proof. State of Nevada versus Daniel. The State of Nevada versus Daryl Edwards Brooks Jr. Rebecca C. Drunken, who is the uh, prosecuting attorney of the county of Washoe state of Nevada verifies and declares upon information and belief and under penalty of perjury that Daryl E. Edwards Jr., the defendant above named, has committed the act of statutory sexual seduction, a violation of NRS 2001364 and NRS 2001368, a felony. In the manner following, to wit, that the said defendant on or between the first day of May 2006 and the 28th day of September 2006 at Sparks Township within the county of Washoe, state of Nevada, did willfully and unlawfully, being over 21 years of age, commit an act of statutory sexual seduction with the person of Erica P., who was then and there under the age of 16 years, in that said defendant engaged in the act of such an agreement, I understand that any substantive or procedural pretrial issues or issues which could have been raised at trial are waived by my plea. I understand that the consequences of my plea guilty are that I may be in prison for a period of one to five years in the Nevada State Department of Corrections and that I am eligible for probation 
and that I am not eligible for probation unless a psychosexual evaluation is completed pursuant to NRS 176.139, which certifies that I do not represent a high risk to a reoffend based on the current accepted standards of assessment and unless a, psychi a psychiatric or psychological evalu evaluation is completed pursuant to NRS 176A.110, which certifies that I do not represent a high risk to reoffend based on the current accepted standards of the reassessment. I may also be fined up to $10,000. In exchange for my plea of guilty, the state, my counsel and I agree to recommend the following. The state will not object to probation if recommended by the Division of Parole and Probation and will otherwise con concur. I will have no contact with Erica P., her mother, Cecilia Patterson, or her grandmother, Madia Patterson, unless contact is requested by any of the said persons. I understand that even though the state and I have reached this plea agreement, the state is reserving the right to represent arguments, facts, and or witnesses at sentencing in support of my plea agreement. So at the time that Dick was an attorney, apparently he was representing the uh, defendant, Daryl Brooks, in regards to this sexual assault rape case in 2007. So I found this article from 2010 that explains the inner politics of the courtroom and how these attorneys were battling each other because they had political aspirations later on. But in this portion of the article, which I will link down below, it mentions this. Gamut currently has an advertisement which claims Roger Holmes called a rape, vict a rape victim a slut, quote unquote. Gamut alleges that Holmes made the slut comment in a case where two girls who were under the age of 16 were allegedly sexually assaulted by a defendant Holmes was assigned. Gamut's representatives in the court, Rebecca Druckmann, not only handled the case in question, but also had other cases with the same two girls who accused my defendant of sexual assault. In the case, a 19-year-old ma male allegedly had consensual sexual relations with the girls in a threesome approximately one hour before the girls allegedly met with Holmes' defendant. There was evidence that the girls had consumed alcohol and marijuana during the threesome. Druckmann knew that Holmes was aware of the threesome case when he asked her if she had any exculpatory evidence. Evidence supported of the defendant, which a prosecutor is constitutionally obligated to disclose. She stated that she did not have any evidence, despite the fact that the other case would have been supportive of Holmes's defendant. Druckmann suggested that the defendant take a deal that would have sentenced him to 20 years to life in prison. The case went to a preliminary hearing in front of a Judge Higgins, not in front of a jury or the press. And Drugman was shocked to learn that Holmes knew of the threesome case. Or further, on further investigation, it was discovered that the girls had set up MySpace pages misrepresenting their ages as being of the age of consent and that they had additional prior sexual contact with other males, including Sparks Police Department Explorer who was aware of the girl's numerous sexual escapades. Once the information regarding the girl's sexual history was brought to light, the judge approved a plea by Holmes' client to a sentence of one year in prison as opposed to 40 years to life in prison sought by Druckmann. The 19-year-old male involved in the threesome case with the girls pleaded guilty to statutory sedu sexual seduction, clearly proving the three did indeed have sexual relations. Are you fucking kidding me? Now I have trolls in the house. Well, let's give him what he wants. So this dick, Stephen Gallant, started harassing me and this is just a portion of what he was doing just on this video. There was other uh, videos he was trying to uh, troll on. 
But basically, he was far right. Um, on my dad's video, I believe he made a stupid comment about um, bail being cheap or no bail release or some shit like that in Illinois. And is that contributing to this new civil war? Some gaslit shit that I wasn't trying to hear. But anyway, so he started trolling. And uh, basically, his main question when he started, when I went back and looked, was... Why did I put in the pricing of the Nugget Hotel when Daryl Brooks tried to bomb the casino? Well, let's go over the bombing itself and let's answer that question. So January 2007, he pleaded guilty to statutory sexual solicitation, charges for having sex with someone aged 16 or under at some point in the mid-2006 while being over the age of 21 himself. The punishment for Brooks being three years of probation, a fine of $2,362, and a psychosexual evaluation. Another charge was tacked on for failing to tell the police he changed his address while being a registered sex offender. Fast forward to March of the same year, which is only three months, March 2007, Brooks made a bomb threat by phone against the Nugget Casino Resort in Sparks, Nevada. Brooks pleaded guilty to the charge of conspiring to disturb the peace and was placed on probation for his sentence, alongside being banned from the casino for the rest of his life. According to the outlet, the change of address charge against Daryl Brooks has been outstanding since August of 2016. The Sparks Criminal Justice Center in Nevada has since renewed it three times, the most recent being at the start of 2021. Now, until I can get a hold of Daryl Sr. to do a interview himself, which I think is going to be impossible, even though I have reached out to my friends from high school and asked everybody to get back to me so they can get a message to him since I do have his address, which is a casino resort that he actually lives at near the uh, Nugget Casino of all places. Now, as far as the truth of where Derek or Daryl was from 2006 and beyond, the only truth that we can find of any recognition is in public records. And as you can see here, because we cannot depend on Daryl's, you know, his testimony or because he lies like a Persian rug. This is what I found. So this is the document for court that was filed on March 30th, 2007 at approximately 2.24 p.m. in the afternoon. It's the state of Nevada versus Daryl Edward Brooks. It should say junior, but it is actually, um, it is him. Um, it says here that Michael L. Haffney of the County of Washoe State of Nevada verifies and declares upon information and belief and under penalty of jury that Daryl Edwards Brooks, the defendant above named, has committed the crime of making a bomb threat, a violation of NRS 202.840, a felony, <clears throat> in the manner following to wit. That the said defendant on or about the 18th day of March 2007 at Sparks Township within the county of Washoe, state of Nevada, did willingly and unlawfully throughout the use of the telephone make a threat concerning an alleged attempt to be made to damage or destroy John S. Gregas Nugget, 1100 Nugget Avenue, Sparks, Washoe County, Nevada, by means of an explosion or a bomb dated this 30th day of March, 2007. So to get his right to another speedy trial, he went ahead and pled out. Pled to the charges of conspiracy to disturb the peace and gross misdemeanor. Upon that, the defendant will plead guilty to the above charge only and the legal fiction being used to reduce the charge. State will stipulate to the probation of six months underbuying or to the court service services today. 
All right, so I'm going to wrap this up because I got to go pick up my kids from school and, you know, get them ready for trick-or-treating and whatnot. But um, as far as Daryl Brooks and him being locked up in the northern Nevada, uh, you know, correctional facility or whatever out in Tahoe um, or wherever it was out in Nevada, um, he did get to do an interview, um, which is now on public records or is in public domain. So I was able to show this to you. And it's his own words admitting that he was on drugs. And this happens to be right when he's going through the fiasco within the six months between the bombing and the uh, statutory rape issue. Enjoy this. And I've got one more thing after this because I do got to get with that troll. So stay tuned. Think about, you know, I got this, I got this beautiful kid who's, who's going without my time. I thought I would just be this wonderful father, this, just be the greatest dad ever. You know, the vision is just like, I'm gonna give him everything that I didn't have. But then it's like, reality set in. You actually become the drug, not even a human being. Basically, that's that's how I felt. Like I wasn't, I wasn't a human anymore. I was just something, something vile, disgusting, despicable. I could go, I could go on. I could use a lot of words, but that's that's what I became. It's, it's really what I became. What you're doing when you enter this life is is basically you're signing a contract. It, it's, it's, it's very fine. Fine line. You're past that now. Now, you're druggy. Oh, man. If I was 15 again, <laughs> if I was 15 and had most of the opportunities that these kids have now, I would probably be doing flips down this thing here now as far as the troll who wanted to know why the pricing was put into the the name of the casino or within the casino in the last video well number one dumbass it's what the article stated and number two as it being an inside joke and you again me explaining this you not being a native of sparks nevada especially when i was around in high school when you turn 18 and you're able to go to a casino not necessarily able to gamble but to go to the club or whatever and, and partake in whatever other activities are there at the resort. That's where you go to impress your old girlfriend or whatever. You take them to that cheap ass, classy hotel that's well known. So that was the inside joke that you wanted to troll me about. Enjoy the video. Or I guess I'll see you in another video.